With the arrival of April, honeybee colonies are becoming more active and beekeepers are getting ready for the busy honey producing months ahead. Michael Schlesinger has the buzz on a Milwaukee beekeeper who goes to great heights to provide the key ingredient for a downtown hotel's sweet food and drink offerings. I don't like honey. <laughs> I, I really don't. Everybody laughs at you about that. Probably the last thing you'd expect to hear from an actual beekeeper, but it doesn't mean Robert McKinney minds making a profit from it. It's a hot honey. It's uh, infused common arrow pepper. So it's going to be sweet, and then on the back end, woo! He sells many different kinds of honey as owner of NJD Apiary, named after his two daughters, buckwheat, creamed, and wildflower, just to name a few. The science of these bees, it's just amazing. There's so much that goes on in there. There's 17 different types of pheromones that control what's going on in there. The way that they communicate through movement, pheromone, it's just amazing. For the last several years, he's also been the beekeeper at the Hilton Milwaukee City Center, pulling honey from four different hives as part of a rooftop garden. He tells me he's a little frightened of heights. You're not scared of heights? <laughs> I am, I just don't look down. It's helped us out uh, to sell the story more than anything else and give a story uh, about the food and, and something a little bit more local. Executive chef Daniel Granite with the Chop House is glad what Robert brings to the table in terms of the honey provided in food and drink recipes like the Brussels sprouts, ice cream, and bees knees concoction featuring gin, lemon, and yes, the special sweetener. And as far as the bees, it, it, it's really nice to have them here. Um, you know, when I first seen Robert uh, walking around the, the hives, I was a little afraid. I'm like, uh, and he's like, ah, I just walked right past him. I didn't care. It, it, it really didn't have an issue with it. Robert was raised in the city, so the fact he's taking part in urban farming, supplying a hotel, the honey it uses, brings it full circle in a way, he believes. Well, to help people to um, grow healthy food for themselves, to change the way that we eat and the way we think and everything. And it also exposes people to nature shows them something's bigger than they, they are out there. Not to mention they know what they're putting in their mouths. People know that pesticides kill bees and insects like that. You have a functioning hive in your garden, people have that guarantee that their food is clean. This particular beekeeper, who's actually a state auditor by day, has a message for anyone interested in a field getting some buzz. People that are just in it for the honey, it's a lot of work for what you're gonna get. They come out, stick their hand in the hive, um, work it, and um, if they're able to deal with it, some continue with it, some don't. Of course, there's the issue of getting stung, too. I get stung in the face, I get stung in the eye, I've gotten stung <clears throat> in some very interesting places. Very interesting places. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that happened. A recent local documentary showcases what he does and the intricate process. Bees go out and they collect nectar, and they spit it into another bee's mouth. They do that a couple times, and then finally they spit it into the cell. When the cell's full, they cap it over. The buzzing that you hear, that's them fanning it, drying it, and it gets thick, and it becomes honey. Robert tells me he's not exclusive to just this location. He's always looking for other places to set up shop and is online too. It's expanding. It's, um, it's, it, it kind of, wherever it flows. <laughs> I, I actually started in my backyard. I had no idea about going past the two hives I had there, but it just seems to pick up. People find me.